To look back at the life and legacy of former IU coach Bob Knight, he died today at his Bloomington home at the age of 83. Reaction coming in from all over the college basketball and sports world tonight. Including from our own Rick Bozich and Eric Crawford, who covered Knight for years. Well, Rick, news that we'd been expecting for a while, but nonetheless jarring and will send shockwaves across the state of Indiana and college basketball. Bob Knight has passed away. How many years did you know Bob Knight? <laughs> uh, very many. I covered him for a short time in Indiana, but you go way back. Bob Knight started at IU in 1971, and so did I. Uh, and I was fortunate to cover his 1974-75 team for the student paper. Uh, he let the student paper go on road trips. I made a couple. One time he put me in a headlock and gave me a Dutch rub, asked me who my favorite sports writer was. Another time he almost left me in Iowa City because I was a few minutes late for the bus. I could go on and on. His legacy is unmatched. As you know from covering games there, whenever he was the coach, you watch the game and you watch the sidelines to see what he was doing, how he was coaching his players, how was he dealing with the referees. Coach of the last perfect team in college basketball, did so many great things, had some unfortunate things happen, and he left at IU. But to me, the happiest thing for me was he did come back and say goodbye to the fans at IU. It ended the right way for Bob Knight with IU and the fans getting a chance to say goodbye, and I think everybody is grateful for that. I covered him in the mid-1990s for a newspaper in Evansville, Indiana, which is where Calvert Cheney played his high school basketball, and Calvert was on his way to being the Big Ten Player of the Year and all-time leading scorer in the Big Ten. And during the time when he was going through that chase, we didn't get a sniff of Calvert Cheney, and Bob Knight did not come and talk. There was always 50-50 as to whether you get to talk tonight. I actually got on my typewriter and wrote Bob Knight a letter saying, look, I'm his hometown paper. We want to do something. And he, uh, his secretary got back, said he would call me at home. Call never came. But later on in my voicemail, the call came with a few quotes. I was always grateful to him for that. He would do great things. He'd do things that make you scratch your head. We're going to have a lot more about Bob Knight. Rick has an excellent column about him at WDRB.com. Just go there and click on sports.